sat behind me here is my friend's 2004 Vauxhall Astra and this thing needs a head gasket. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. You join me sitting in my friend Tom's Vauxhall Astra H, so it's a 2004 model, this is the Mark V model, and this thing has got a head gasket issue. Now, as you can imagine, I've already had a look and I've already diagnosed the head gasket as being bad. I'll obviously go through all that with you and show you exactly what I found, just so that you know why I'm doing the job that I'm doing today. Um, but this car has had a misfire for a long time, um, and it's not really been dealt with up until now. Tom brought the car over to me and I scanned it, um, and it came up with a misfire on cylinder one. Then it also said that there was multiple misfires on the other cylinders, but I think that's just because it's running rough. Um, that it thinks there's a misfire all over. So what I did first of all was I checked the injectors. I used my stethoscope, I've got a like a doctor's stethoscope, checked that the injectors were firing, all four of them, and they sounded like they were. And the next thing I wanted to check was the spark plugs. Now this thing had new spark plugs, Tom did them, and a new coil pack in fact, a year ago, I think it was, um, because it had the misfire still then, and he thought maybe a spark plug, maybe it was a coil pack, did both those things, and didn't really sort the issue out, turned the engine light off, and it didn't really sort the issue out properly. So, now a year later, he's brought it to me, um, and I have taken the spark plugs out myself, taken the cool pack off, and I've found something quite considerably wrong uh, with cylinder one. We have oil in cylinder one, and I think there's also coolant in there. I think there's oil and coolant mixing in cylinder one. As I said, I'll show you that in a second. I'll show you exactly what I found um, and what led me to this diagnosis. Now, I'm just gonna quickly run the car before I go ahead and start taking things apart. I'm gonna run the car so you can hear the misfire. It's pretty bad, you can hear it out of the exhaust. You can feel it in the car, the car shakes a little bit. Um, it's pretty bad and I drove it home here so that I could work on it um, and the drive was awful. The engine light was flashing at me, um, it had no power, there was nothing. It was awful misfires and it was awful to drive. So this car needs some serious love um, and a new head gasket unfortunately. Right, I'm gonna stick the keys in and uh, we'll give you a listen so you can see what it sounds like. Make sure I'm not in gear. I'm not. You see, it's hard, hard to start as well. The engine light is on. I'll give you a listen to the engine side first. Hopefully, you'll be able to hear that. You can see that it's juddering and misfiring. And if I take you to the exhaust, you can also hear it back here as well. She's chuffing away like a choo-choo train. It does not sound good. Right, I'm just gonna turn it off. So, as you can probably hear, she doesn't sound healthy. That's the first thing. The next thing is uh, the coolant level goes down. You can see that this is where it should be, and it does go down slowly. And I think also the oil level is a little low, and Tom has had to top up every now and again. Well, it's not low. The oil does have to keep getting topped up, and obviously if you're losing coolant, you're losing oil, there's a high chance that you've got a head gasket issue. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and take out the spark plugs. Obviously, I've got the cover here to take off, which is nice and easy. The coil pack I'm gonna take off, and then I'll put, whip the spark plugs out, and I'll show you exactly why we're doing what we're doing today. So I thought for today's video, I'm gonna try something different. I have got a GoPro on my head, and I'm gonna try and do quite a bit of this job using the GoPro. I've kind of got it pointing in my eye direction, so wherever I look, you should be able to see it on the camera. I'm hoping that footage is gonna come out good. I feel like if I haven't got to keep moving the camera around, it's gonna be a lot easier to film. I'll be able to get this job done quicker. Um, hopefully it'll be quite a cool perspective being able to see exactly what I see as I do the job. So we're gonna try this out today. I'm gonna to mix it up, use this camera and this camera, uh, mix the footage together and hopefully you enjoy it. If you do enjoy it, let me know down in the comments and I'll do it more often. Right, let's get this uh, coil pack off, get the spark plugs out and I'll show you the damage. Okay, we're recording. I can see the footage on my phone. So I'm gonna leave my phone here so I know exactly what's going on. Got the tools. Got my electric ratchet as well. So we need a T40 Torx. I don't know if you can see that, there you go. To 
take off the cool pack. It's going to be a little noisy because I'm going to be using my um, electric ratchet, obviously, to do a lot of this. So just bear with. Just going to unplug the electrical connector and just pull her out. The coil pack rubber and the, uh, the spring fell off for some reason on this fourth one. So I'm just going to pull that out. Spark plug socket. Gonna whip these out real quick. I've had these out not long ago. I've, um, I apologise as well for the noise. If someone's having some work done over there, some building work, it's really loud. Right. So I don't know how long I'm gonna be able to show the camera. There you go. There's the GoPro. These are the four spark plugs. I don't know if you can see, but the one. This is how they went in the cylinders. So that's how they sat. One, two, three, and four. I don't know if you can see that. That cylinder one is oily and black and not very pretty at all. I'll just show you this camera as well, just so you can see what I'm on about. There you go. You see cylinder one, which is this one here. Look how ugly that is. Oil on it and everything. The other ones don't look too bad. They've been running a bit lean, I think. You can see that. But that one there. There's the culprit. Cylinder one, no good. Now, I don't know how well you can see. I'm gonna use uh, my other camera for this bit. But there's oil inside the piston. So I've got one of these miniature cameras which you can put down into the spark plug to be able to see what's going on. And I actually recorded a video on my phone of going down in there um, and you can see all the oil and coolant sitting on top of the piston and where on the other three, they're all nice and clean the first one is disgusting so I'll put that footage in the video now so you can see that just so you can see exactly what I'm talking about Now I don't think anyone can argue that this car needs a head gasket, so now that we're all agreed, I'm going to start taking this thing apart. Right, so the first thing I'm going to tackle is the air box on this side. The plan is to get rid of this big chunky piece because it's in the way, and the battery and the battery tray are going to come out as well. And anything else that's sort of in the way of anything that I need to access, I'll, I'll take out. But these are the two main things, so I'm going to go for the air box first. I'm just going to unplug the uh, air temperature sensor. And then there's just a Jubilee clip holding this thing on. Right, there's that. And then the battery, a couple of 10 mils on the terminals. And the battery itself is held in just down there with a 13 mil, I think it is. One battery. We've then got some 13 mils holding the tray in. Right, it's a good start. That's, um, opened up these both areas you can see so I can get around the sides of the engine I can see what I actually need to do now right I'm going to tackle the wiring next I think I want to get this wiring loom uh, this one along here just all out of the way so I'm just going to unplug all these different sensors sensor on the throttle body sensors back there just unplug as many of them as I can and try and get this loom pushed over to the side over here just so it's out of the way
Right, so as you've seen by, right, so as you've seen by the GoPro, um, I've been doing a little bit of work. It doesn't really look that much different to when I started, but I have done a fair amount. I've unplugged the majority of the wiring. You can see there's a big bunch of it here, a big bunch here that goes down behind the uh, intake manifold. I'm gonna have to find where that goes so we can get that fully out of the way. I've taken the intake manifold bolts out. You can see them just there. I've taken them out. And I was about to take out the front exhaust bolts um, and I took the manifold shield off as you would have seen but the exhaust bolts themselves, they don't look great. I've got a feeling this is gonna be our first hurdle of the day. Um, these ones look okay, but this one here looks a bit sad. Bear in mind, these are supposed to be 10 millimeter bolts. I don't know if you can see them. Look how angry that one looks. They're all rusty. Um, I've sprayed them with some WD-40 in the hope that that will give me the best chance to get them off. I have got some of those Irwin uh, rounded bolt removers, so if I do get into any difficulty, hopefully they will save me. I'm gonna work on some other stuff whilst those bolts are soaking, and then um, I'll give them a go in a little while, maybe five or 10 minutes. Um, I'm trying to think what else I can do. You can see the belt now. I've taken the cover off for the timing belt. I've got a timing tool to make sure that we time these up. It also looks like we've got some marks. We've got a yellow mark here. You can see that there. And there's a yellow mark there. And we've also got two yellow marks in here, so I'm assuming yellow mark has to line up with yellow mark, and then we should be uh, top dead center at the bottom, and then the top should be timed up as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, I think, next. I'm just gonna have to rotate the engine over using the crank down the bottom, rotate it until these yellow marks line up, and then uh, our engine should be in time at least then, and I can go ahead and uh, find, figure out how to remove the belt. Right, it's just how we're doing this. Um, to prove that it's top dead centre in the first cylinder, because if those of you that don't know, when you time up an engine, number one cylinder is supposed to be at the top. Um, I've stuck a screwdriver in the spark plug hole just so that I can see when it goes up or down um, that it is actually at the top stroke. And I'm also going to um, use the marks on the timing belt as well, the little yellow marks, to uh, make sure that that's in time. Um, and that's just like a way of just double checking, just to make sure that the engine is in the right position at the bottom. I've got a Torx with a ratchet down the bottom. Um, I'm not going to be able to show you, but I'm just going to spin it over. You'll see the screwdriver move up and down. All right, so hopefully you can see this, and hopefully you can actually hear me. We have got two lines on the um, actual sprockets themselves. You see that line there? And that matches up with this line here. I'll try and bring it in closer. There you go. And then someone else has put their own marks on the uh, actual pulleys themselves. Can you see? in there that they now line up as well. There you go, yellow, yellow, that, that. And then the screwdriver is at the top as well. I don't know if I actually recorded turning it over, but this is now at the top and the piston number one is at the top as well. So we are now dead in time. So I need to get that timing tool in there now um, and hopefully that will all be good uh, just to keep the cams in place and also to keep the, the bottom in place as well whilst we remove the belt. So this here is the timing tool that I picked up. Um, I bought it off eBay, it was like six quid or something. It was advertised for the 1.6, it also works on the 1.4 and even the 1.2 I think, I'm not entirely sure. But you get you get two pieces that make up the locking tool and then you also get a pin for the tensioner. So when you take the tension off the belt, uh, you put the pin in and that will hold the tension off whilst you remove the belt. So I'm gonna open this up and we'll uh, see how this works. I haven't done one on this engine before, so this is gonna be new to me. Although fairly similar to the Astro Mark IV I believe. You see these sort of slot together I think. Like so, in between there, somehow. I think you have to put one in, then the other, or something like that. Like that, put that one in first. And then you slot this one in once it's in place. Something like that. I know this tool was cheap, but it doesn't actually fit the cog all that well. If I put it in there, where it's supposed to go, the teeth don't actually sit in the cog. You see that? You put the top in, bottom pops out, Put the bottom in, top pops out. It's not like, it's kind of not the right shape. It's not round enough. And so that's not gonna work. So I'm gonna have to rely on these um, these markings, which is not a problem because they, they're in the correct place. Um, I'm not gonna be able to use my tool, which is a shame. So we're just gonna have to time it back up. We just need to move it a tiny bit to the right. Um, and then we'll just use these markings as a, as a guide. Okay, so I've managed to free off the intake manifold. As you can see, we have movement there. That's completely away now. You can see the gasket in between. I want to remove the fuel rail from the sort of second part of the intake. The intake 
manifold has got two bits. One is bolted to the engine and one um, is this part right here. So I want to take the injectors out and I'm going to take the injectors out as a whole. So with the rail and the injector still in it and the loom and everything. So I can just sort of push it to the side. Now you can on these rails, there's a little valve on the end. Um, I'm going to release any pressure because I did drive the car an hour ago or so. So I want to release the pressure. There's just like a little valve, like a bike stem valve. You just, I'm going to put a rag over it, poke it with a screwdriver and it'll let out any pressure just so that when I pop this off, fuel doesn't just got, sort of go everywhere and all in my face. I have got my lovely pink um, shades on just in case any does splash up. Uh, I don't want it going in my eyes. So I've got my nice pink glasses on. They'll do the job. Oh, there's no, no pressure in there. That's good. I do love the smell of petrol. Right, well there they are. All four injectors. I'm gonna wrap something around the end, maybe put a rubber glove on each one just so that I don't get anything inside the jets. You can probably see the jets if you look close enough. See the tiny little holes? That's where the fuel comes out. Um, I just need to release this somehow because it's a little bit stiff at the minute and then I'll get it out of the way. All right, engine mount on this side needs to come off now. Just going to remove this. I've put a jack under the car, if you can see that. Got my jack under there supporting the bottom of the engine with a piece of rubber on there as well so it doesn't damage the bottom of the engine. It's currently just sitting on the left hand side of the sump um, and that's perfectly fine. It's got a big old chunk of rubber like that big so it shouldn't do any damage whatsoever. So that's just taking the load. Also just take these bolts off. There she is. Come on. Right, well there is the belt tensioner and bolt. The belt is now free and pull the belt off the cams because they're in line so just pull that off there like so and that's just going to sit there like that just out of the way whilst we do all the head work and whatnot right next up we're going to work on this valve cover um, as you've just seen belt is off so i want to get the valve cover off so i can get the cam sprockets off so that i can get this plastic trim off as well because that needs to come off at the same time so i'm going to whiz all these out as well on there. It's pretty stuck on this. There we go. She's free. Oh, that's pretty gross. Ooh, look. I don't know if that's just condensation or not, but it's pretty grim. This gasket is rock solid, rock hard. That's due a replacement. There's a bit of minging in there as well. A little bit like it hasn't had enough oil changes or something. It's quite grimy. It's not what you want to see. I honestly don't know what I'd do without this thing today. It saved me so much time, um, this Sealy Ratchet. I got this a while ago. A lot of you have asked whether I still use it or not. As on jobs like this, where it's just a case of undoing bolts after bolts after bolts, you can't beat it, man. It's just so good. It gets in all the small places. Um, it's a great little thing. Now, the reason I wanted to take the valve cover off, as you've just seen, got some uh, milkshake in there, or some mayonnaise, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the reason I want to take it off is because to get the um, pulleys off of the side here there's a little hex right here where you can put a spanner on 
don't know if you can even see that, can you? Right there. You can get like a 22 mil, I think, on that. And you can hold the cam in place whilst you undo this bolt right here. Otherwise, it'll just obviously spin and spin. Um, so I'm going to undo both of those. Quickly pull these off. And this plastic's going to come off. And then this side of the engine is near enough done. The back is done because the intake manifold is loose, as you can see. Um, I need to just tackle this side, which is basically just a... I think that's where the thermostat is on this side. And the EGR valve. So I just need to disconnect them. And then the front... I'm going to leave it all last because I've got a feeling it's going to be problematic with those bolts. Uh, the little 10 mils, like I said, they've been soaking for a while now, so they should be okay. I'm going to tackle the camshafts first, though. So I was wrong. It's a 24 mil spanner on the camshaft. Just sits there like that. Whilst I crack it to the side. Yeah. Now what's good about voxels is they actually have like a little, um, what would you call it, uh, I can't think of the term, but there's like a little key there, so that when you put it on, that locates in a certain place, so you can't put these on wrong, which is fantastic, they're both like that, they're both keyed, as you can see, so when you put it all together, it doesn't really matter, um, obviously you need to know which one goes which, uh, this one with the lip goes on the left, you can see the lip there, and this one without the lip, on the front goes on the right so they sit like that right so we've come to the part of the job that I'm not looking forward to because I've got a feeling something's gonna go wrong I know you shouldn't talk these things up but just got a feeling the front exhaust manifold bolts are my next target to take off um, they are 10 millimeter or they're supposed to be 10 millimeter if they haven't rusted away and to give myself the best shot of getting these off I've actually got myself a 10 mil which is like a special sealy one I don't know if you can see that but it's got teeth inside to grip on to the bolt I think that that's probably my best bet I'm gonna hammer it on as well got myself a little hammer so I'm gonna tap that onto the each bolt and just just gently crack it off and hopefully we can get all of them wish me luck all right, here we go. I'm going to start with the easy ones at the top, just to give myself an idea as to what these are going to be like. Cool, they're tight. Okay, it's moving. It's a good sign. Ta-da! That's how rough they look. The ones at the bottom are even worse, though. It's the problem. Right, I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these, and uh, if I don't bring you back during it, I'll bring you back afterwards. Right, so rather unfortunately, they all came out except for two. Two of them rounded off, which means only one thing, I have brought out the Irwin bolt grip tools. Let's see them. I used these in a previous video, I used the, what number did I use, 13? can't remember what job it was on, but I used one of these and it got the belt out. No, I was on the Fiesta subframe, rear subframe. Um, I managed to get it out with that, no problem. So I've got the 10 mil here. As you can see that. Essentially what these do, if you don't know what they are, is you hammer them on and they sort of bite in. The more you turn, the more they bite into the actual bolt. So hopefully this thing will get it out. I've had 100% success so far with these. And I don't want that to change right now. So let's try this out. Ta-da! I managed to get that last belt out using the Irwin, of course. Um, it was this middle one right here, right in the most awkward position it could possibly be. But that is now the exhaust manifold free from the head. So we are intake free, we are timing belt free, we are exhaust free. The only thing we're not free is the uh, thermostat slash EGR setup that we've got sitting on the right hand side of the engine. So I'm going to quickly attack that, take off as much of this as I can. And then uh, I think we're ready to pull the head after that. Just get this brack out of the way. It's in my way for everything. I think I'm just going to go ahead and remove this whole sort of 
assembly as one just to get it out of the way seems like there is this whole thing should now be free this whole mechanism right quick update team i think and i say i think that we are ready uh, to do undo the head bolts and pull the head I have taken the manifold from the front, undid all that, that is now away. I've taken the timing belt off the side, that is now away. I have loosened and taken off the uh, intake manifold, that is out of the way. And I have just now done the last side, which is this side, you can see all this now moves. Um, it's not sort of out of the way, but it should be alright just sitting there, because I can just move the head out of the way without that. Um, it's just four bolts and the whole lot just came away as one. And as I said, I think we're ready to take the head bolts. So the head bolts are these ones right here. Got ten of them all the way across, and then this head should pop off nice and easy. Whew. All right, I'm going to do the same again. There we go, that's all the old head bolts. Now in theory, this head is now ready to come off. So as long as there's nothing attached to the back that I can't see, this thing should come clean off. Um, it's probably gonna be a little bit stuck there because it's been there for so long. But with the little help of a pry bar, I'm gonna lift this thing off and uh, hopefully it will just come off all at once. Got a bit of water seepage because I haven't drained the coolant. I wasn't gonna bother. It's gonna be a little bit we lost. All right, let's give her a wiggle. moving. Oh my goodness, that was a big old struggle. There was like this wiring harness all tucked behind there. But goodness me, there we go. That is the prize right there, the head gasket. Ignore the coolant in the, the things, that's because I didn't drain the coolant. I probably should have done, but I know I wouldn't lose much. So there's a bit of coolant out there to suck out. But this is the, the gasket. Now, although it's split, I think that might be probably more from me having lifted off um, the head and had a wrestle with it, but I think it was breakage was over here because there seemed to be a big problem with oil being in here and coolant in this number one piston, which is this one just here. And it seemed to be coming from this side. Could be wrong, but we'll take this head gasket off here. It's like welded itself on. It's proper welded on that is. There we go. Lovely stuff. There she is. It looks pretty done this, doesn't it? It's actually split there. But I'm sure, I'm pretty sure, it's hard to tell just by looking at it. I'm pretty sure it was leaking around this side somewhere. This is probably the factory one I'd imagine. Is there any markings on it? Probably is factory. I'm actually well happy with today's progress. I was actually hoping that by the end of today, I would have the head off so that I could inspect. Um, and then tomorrow what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean everything up and rebuild time is tomorrow. Um, so we're exactly on time. It's started to get dark, you can probably see it on the camera. It's also started to rain a little bit, so that's perfect timing. I have been recording on this as much as possible, but it's really awkward having to use two cameras and do such an, like, an involved job. Head gasket is not an easy job. And um, it's quite involved, so to be picking up two cameras or remembering to use them both and to be doing the job at the same time, it's not been easy. Um, I'll probably just use the GoPro for more, uh, like more or less involved jobs in the future, not head gaskets because it's, uh, it's not much fun. But there we go, the head gasket is off, 
the head is off down there and then this is what we are left with you can see this is number one piston that's not water on well it is a bit of water on there but there's a lot of build up and crud on there like burnt up oil um, so that's definitely a problem I'll have to suck this corner out of here in a minute so that doesn't rust and then that piston is not actually that bad it's fairly clean that one but there you go the block looks okay got no cracks nothing like that looks good I do want to just inspect the bottom of the head though real quick just flip it over there you go you can see this is number one piston on this side look how grubby that is in there compared to that one and that one and that one you can see where the issue was definitely for sure and that's where the oil was coming in right here the block looks like I mean it looks okay the, the head actually looks okay though as a first glance I won't know until I clean it up a bit I'll give it all this a good clean up obviously I'll clean up the block clean up the piston faces as well like I usually do when I do these head gasket jobs and then I'll go ahead and clean up the surface of this and I'll clean up all where the valves are and stuff like that um, this is not going to be like a complete a lot, not like as involved as I usually would where I'd probably rebuild the head at this stage if it was my car um, but we're doing this on a budget so we're going minimalistic this time we're not going to get it surfaced or anything like that the head we're just going to clean it up um, I will check if it's flat because obviously it's a waste of time if it isn't flat and if it, if it proves to be flat then obviously we'll just use it again with a new head gasket and new gaskets for the rest of the stuff but there you go that is how to remove a head I know I didn't show them that's how to remove a head on one of these Astra 1.6 this is the Z 1.6 XEP engine I believe which I think is the twin port one I'm actually going to go ahead and end this video right here I hope you guys enjoyed it I hope you guys enjoy the GoPro footage as well I'll put in as much of this as I can providing the footage actually comes out any good because I haven't looked back at it yet so I don't know if it is any good yet um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure you give it a thumbs up the plan is as I said tomorrow I'm going to come out here nice and early get this stuff all cleaned up get it ready for the new head gasket and for the head to go back on um, and then rebuild time so hopefully by the end of tomorrow if everything goes smoothly this car will be back up and running again, uh, which will be great. And it hopefully won't be misfiring anymore. We'll see. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe for future content. I highly appreciate it. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram for daily updates on what I'm up to. And I'll see you guys in the next one.